Do you ever find yourself pulling your daughter in a box at a constant speed across the living room floor and just really want to analyze the forces acting on the box? Well, I've got you covered. In this video, we're going to analyze a free body diagram that involves a diagonal force, including how to resolve it into its vector components, and then figure out what the unknown forces are. So let's uh, jump to the whiteboard and get started. So the problem says someone pulls on a 100 newton box with a tension force of 50 newtons causing the box to move at a constant speed. We're going to neglect drag and we're going to calculate the magnitude, that's just the amount, of the other forces acting on the box. So let's start by drawing a free body diagram. Now the box is being pulled so we know I've got a tension force. I'm going to draw it actually on the line of the string that's connected to the box um, because it's already got my angle labeled for me. That tension force is 50 newtons according to the problem, so I'm going to label that. We also have a gravitational force or a weight that's pulling down on the box, so I'll draw that downward. And when I draw a free body diagram, the dot can really be anywhere, so I don't have it in the middle of the box. It's a little bit easier for me to draw the dot right there because that lines up with the string with the angle labeled already. That force of gravity is 100 newtons, so I'm going to label that. I'm going to call it negative 100 newtons because it's downward. I'm defining up and to the right as positive, so down or to the left will both be negative. That box, of course, is in contact with the ground, and the ground is going to be holding the box upward, and so I've got a normal force pointed upward. That box is also sliding along the ground, so there's going to be a resistive friction force. Since the box is moving to the right, friction must be to the left. Now that we've drawn our free body diagram, the next step is going to be to take that diagonal force and resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components. The reason we do that is because we can add up horizontal vectors to equal whatever the net force is horizontally, and we can add up vertical vectors to equal whatever the net force is vertically. But when we've got a diagonal force, we can't use that number 50 really for anything because it's at an angle. So that's why we're going to resolve this into its horizontal and its vertical component. Those components make a 90 degree angle, and I'm gonna label those components FTY and FTX to represent the vertical component and the horizontal component. I'm gonna use a couple trig functions to solve for what those components are, and I've got a whole video on that if you need to review that. Otherwise, I'm gonna go through it really quickly here in this video. So I'm gonna use sine of 30 degrees equals FTY over 50, sine of 30 equals opposite over hypotenuse, and then I'm gonna solve for FTY by multiplying by 50 on either side, and I get FTY equals 50 sine of 30, Put that into the calculator, make sure you're in degrees, and you get 25 newtons. Also, if you knew that this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and you know your special triangle rules for that, you could take 50 divided by 2 and get 25. But of course, the trig functions will always work, no matter if it's a special right triangle or not. All right, we'll do the same thing, but with cosine to find FTX. So cosine of 30 degrees equals adjacent FTX over hypotenuse 50. And I get this right here. I'm going to multiply by 50 on both sides, and I get FTX equals 50 cosine of 30 put that into the calculator and I get 43.3 newtons. Now that I've resolved that diagonal force vector into its horizontal and vertical components, I can use normal free body diagram analysis to solve for unknown vectors, in this case, the friction and the normal force. I'm gonna do the vertical and the horizontal separately. I'm gonna start with the horizontal. Before I do that, I need to take a look and see, is this at constant speed or do I have a net force that's not zero? Well, in the case of this problem, the box is moving at a constant speed, and according to Newton's first law, if the velocity is constant, the forces must be balanced. In other words, the net force is zero. So F net X, or F net in the horizontal direction, is zero Newtons, and that means that the horizontal forces should add up to be zero. Well, what horizontal forces do I have? I have FTX, which is 43.3. I have force of friction, which I don't know, and that's the only horizontal forces I have. So those two forces add up to zero. I could do this in my head. 43.3 plus what gives me zero? Well, the force of friction must be negative 43.3. I can write that out algebraically if I want to show that. I can say FTX plus force of friction equals zero. FTX is 43.3. I solve for force of friction, subtract 43.3 on either side, and I get force of friction equals negative 43.3 newtons, like we said. And so I can label that over here. Force of friction is negative 43.3 newtons. Now let's take a look at the vertical forces. In this problem, even if the box wasn't moving at a constant speed horizontally, the box isn't lifting up off the ground. It's not moving up or down at all. So there's a constant speed or a constant velocity of zero vertically. Now let's take a look at the vertical forces. In this case, the box isn't lifting up off the ground at all. And even if the speed weren't constant horizontally, the speed would be constant vertically. It'd be a constant speed of zero vertically because it's not moving up or down at all. Because there's a constant vertical speed of zero, I know that the F net in the vertical direction has to be zero. And therefore all of my vertical forces have to add up to zero. So what vertical forces do I have? 
Well, there's normal and gravity. A common misconception that students make is that the normal force has to be equal to the gravitational force, because often it is in, in many problems that they've done. But it doesn't have to be, and in this case, it's not. Don't forget about the vertical component of the tension force. So in this case, normal doesn't equal gravity, but rather the normal force plus the FTY, the vertical component of the tension, have to add up to balance out the force of gravity here. Or you could say those three forces add up to be a net force of zero. So I'm gonna write it out that way. Normal force plus the FTY, the vertical component of tension, plus the force of gravity add up to be zero. I'm gonna substitute in for what I know. Normal force I don't know yet. FTY was 25 newtons. And force of gravity is negative 100 newtons. Those three forces add up to zero. I can do the math here, 25 plus negative 100 is negative 75, add 75 on both sides, and I get a normal force of 75 newtons. I can label that on my diagram there. Now you could do that without writing out the equation like this, and a lot of times students find it easier to not write out that equation, but rather just to kind of work through this in your head. If the problem's longer and more complicated, that can be hard to do, but in this case we could do it. If you think about what plus 25 would give you 100, well, 75 plus 25 would give you 100. So you could have done that one in your head without writing this all out. But I find it helpful to write out, especially when we get to problems where the F net is not zero, and these don't just add up to balance out to zero, they add up to be the F net. I find writing it out like this is a little bit easier. So we finished this problem. We've solved for the magnitudes of the two forces that we didn't know. The friction force having a magnitude of 43.3 newtons, and the normal force having a magnitude of 75 newtons. I wanna show you one more way to do this using a vector addition diagram. If you like geometry more than algebra, this might be the method for you, and it involves writing out this free body diagram as a vector addition diagram, and then just using geometry to solve it. And if you don't like this way, don't use it. Use the way that I showed you first. So to draw this out as a vector addition diagram, I'm gonna start with gravitational force downward. I've got a tension force up to the right, I've got a normal force upward, and my friction force to the left. I can take that diagonal force and resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components. And I know I've got a bunch of right angles in this uh, rectangle that I made here. And I can go ahead and start just labeling the forces that I know. I know that gravity is 100 newtons downward. I know that, that tension force is 50. We already resolved that into its components, so 43.3 and 25. And now I can just use geometry to figure out the unknown parts of this. And so I've got this horizontal friction force here. Um, which has to be negative 43.3 because that side has to be the same as this side of the rectangle. And what would that normal force upward right here be? Well, the two sides of the rectangle have to be the same length. And so if this one's 100, this is 25, then this must be 75 to get a total of 100 here. So I know my normal force is 75 newtons upward. So those were several methods to solve a free body diagram with diagonal forces, in this case at a constant velocity. Now, as you do more problems, you're probably gonna find problems that are set up slightly different. Maybe you don't know the diagonal force and you have to solve for this force and this component force first in order to find that. But however the problem is set up, you're gonna approach it the same way. You'll draw a free body diagram, you'll resolve any diagonal forces into their horizontal and vertical components, and then you'll basically ignore the diagonal vector for the rest of the problem. You'll just use its horizontal and vertical components. And from there, you'll just do your free body diagram analysis just like you would as if you didn't have a diagonal force vector. All right, good luck solving free body diagrams with diagonal forces. All right, Alondra, pull it at a constant speed, okay? Pull <laughs> back this way. <laughs> <laughs>